Be sure to check out my store for the stuff I use and templates at a low cost, and get my everything pack so you can have everything in my store at a reduced cost, less than $20 if you tweet it out. What's up guys, Quezzy here bringing you guys another tutorial. Today I'm going to be showing you how to create text logos in Illustrator. You can see I have a few different variations uh, up on the screen right now. And this was actually some client work I was doing, and I didn't think to do a tutorial on this, this was just like standard client work, but then someone suggested it on Twitter. Um, and I thought I'd go ahead and do it because there's a lot of variations you can do with this and it's really simple It's not very difficult. Um, Lance actually turns out to be a pretty easy name to do this with um, But yeah guys, let's get right into it. I'm just gonna move these guys off to the side But I'm still gonna have them here as a reference and the first thing you want to do is create a document and I do 1500 by 1500 pixels so uh, if you want to follow me exactly, you can do that or do whatever size you want. Uh, it's up to you. But then you just want to go over here to the rectangle tool, get that. Make sure you take off your stroke by hitting uh, none and just picking a black or a dark gray or whatever, really. It doesn't really matter the color. And then we just want to make a simple box, like uh, horizontally. Make it sort of thick. Um, you can always change the width and stuff, and the length won't matter too much. Uh, so you want to do something like that. Then you want to press Alt, click, drag up, and that will duplicate that guy. And we just want to move it and hold shift or rotate it, hold shift to 90 degrees. And then set it up like so. So now we have like our L, this is like our first letter. And then we can play with the sizes a little more. So this one's going to be a little taller. That's what we want. And then, obviously, just straight up and down like this is kind of boring. We want it sort of on an angle, as you can see from these. So we're going to go ahead and select the two top points. And you can just click one of them and drag over. And you can hold shift to keep it um, pretty straight. And that looks about good enough. Let's just move it over a bit like that. There we go, there's our L. We could make this a little thicker even. Uh, this might be a little too thin, uh, but it shouldn't be a problem. It should work out. Uh, then I'm gonna go to the bottom part and just extend it. <clears throat> and by the way, guys, we're just creating a general outline of the logo right now. Like, this isn't anything too much of detail. You just wanna do whatever name you're doing. Um, so the next thing we're gonna be doing is the A. So let's go ahead and duplicate this guy and hold Shift. And bring it out give it a decent spacing so you can still tell what the letter is so obviously this will be an L and that might be a little too much spacing but like right there then let's duplicate this guy again and that should be about enough I think and let's get this bottom guy duplicate him put him somewhere in the middle for the a bit and then put him at the top as well there we go, there's our A. And then let's move on to the end. So obviously you can see this is just like a, a lot of duplicating uh, these squares. There we go. And let's go again, bring it over. Something like that. Let's actually duplicate this guy, then right click and transform reflect. Vertical, okay. Bring that over. And that's like the easiest way to create ends or M's. Just uh, go to the opposite angle of whatever this was that we created originally. And you can see that works out real nice, looks real clean. Uh, let's duplicate this once again, doing our alt method. And I always just kind of eye the spacing. You could put like little squares there and duplicate them to get an even spacing if you want. I just tend to not do that. Let's get the top one from the A again and let's duplicate that and create the C. So let's just line it up with that back corner like that. Duplicate it, hold shift, bring it down. Maybe extend it a little more. There we go. Actually, let's keep it on that angle. So let's just line it up with that back point again. A little too far like that. There we go. We'll probably change this eventually. Actually, we'll extend this out to be part of the E. That's what I did. And let's duplicate this one once again. There we go, we'll grab this, intersect it there, and then we'll grab the one from the A and keep it aligned. You wanna, ah, this is actually too far away. So things in the middle like this, I always like to keep them in line because if they're not in line, it kind of bothers me. 
So always try to do that. Uh, unless it, you don't really care, then don't. Uh, <laughs> but there we go. So this is like the general layout for the logo. There we go. Simple enough. You just standard layout. Obviously, some letters are going to be harder than others, so you might have to get creative. Like with my name, Quezzy, the Q is always super difficult to uh, get right. Um, takes a lot of just playing around with stuff. Like I said earlier, though, Lance is pretty easy. It's pretty straightforward. But now we want to get a little creative. So you kind of want to start spotting things that you want to do with the logo. So obviously, I extended the L right away. Like that was one of the first things I did. And I extended the C. And that was like pre-thought when I was designing this logo. I was like, all right, I'm definitely going to do that. And I'm definitely going to do that. So like that's immediately what I thought of. And then you can kind of start getting other ideas as you go. So you notice over here I did this like cool N, which looked really nice. And then this was like a little too much of a focal point for uh, the client. So you wanted this to be less and the L be more. So if you come down here, you can see I extended the L. I made the N a little smaller, so that turned out real, real good. Uh, but we can go ahead and do something like that here. Uh, first off, let's actually clean up everything a little bit better. So what I mean by that is the C, this kind of spot looks really bad. So we want to line this up. So let's just go ahead, select these two points using the white mouse tool, the direct selection. And we're just going to bring this over holding shift to somewhere close like that. And then we want to get the point that's further away from the E or whatever letters there and bring it over and match the angle like that there we go then you can select this point and space it out a little more if you want if that's a little too close so you do something like that whatever and then let's I want a space right here so what I did for that was just get a square and let's just go ahead and cr or create a little rectangle and whatever this gap will be or however big you make this rectangle that's how big the gap would be so uh, I'm going to go fairly big like that, like that's a decent size. Then select that square and the one it intersects with. Go to the Pathfinder. If you don't have the Pathfinder up, you want to go to Window and Pathfinder right there. And it should pop up somewhere over here. But you want to do the second shape mode. And that will just delete that space. And then you'll notice if I select this now, there's a little bit down here. And we don't want that. So we're going to right click, ungroup. And then just go and select that bit and delete it because it's pointless. And that might have been a little too big of a gap. I don't know. We'll just deal with it. And actually, I just noticed all of these are slightly off. There we go. That's better. And let's actually do the same thing with the A with this gap. So I should have duplicated this square. But since I didn't, I'm just going to recreate it with the same spacing. There we go. And we'll bring it over for the A and do the same thing we just did. Boom. There we go. Pretty easy. Uh, I don't like this E a lot, so I'm going to kind of change it up. And I'm going to start adding some angles and things like that. So let's go ahead and maybe we'll extend this E like that. We can get this guy too. Give it a bit of an angle. And maybe do the bottom one like this and do a bit of an angle just so it has a more uh just appealing finish the straight e kind of looks off in some cases um so we'll do that maybe a little more on this guy there we go that's not too bad um, i'm actually going to bring this one in a smidge and then we'll select these two points and just bring them in so they're on screen there we go and then I'm gonna do the same thing with the L so the angles are a little harder because you can't just use the arrow keys or just click and hold shift because if I click hold shift and bring it up you can see that that angle changes and now that's not even so what you need to do is let me zoom in here a little bit you got to select the point and keep it uh, selected and line it up line up the path with the original do something like that that's really the only way you can go about doing it and I should have done this one I think this will look better like that there we go and then you can select both of them and do the same thing there we go to extend it 
and it still kind of looks a little uneven so maybe bump that over a little bit there we go that's good enough there's our L that's looking not too shabby now we want to make the N a little more interesting and usually the center letter uh, it's a good place to extend it make it a little bigger as I showed you guys earlier with the N and because it's like the central piece it will look good if you do it because it'll be balanced and uh, especially since the like this part of the L and the C kind of balance the piece or the logo so it'll look pretty nice but let's go ahead select these two bottom points and let's drag them down and make sure they're still in line there we go let me zoom in a bit I'm gonna select this one and just create the angled finish again <clears throat> if it'll let me I hate when those guides pop up there we go just a little bit and then we'll do the same thing on the other side <clears throat> something like that there we go you can see that looks really good still looks balanced too um, this is not a bad logo it looks really nice in my opinion and then there's a few things you can also do with the gaps so let me just show you a few examples so this one you can see I just did like a little angle thing which I think looks really sweet the client didn't like that that's why it changed down here uh, or you can do the straight um, ones that I have here but all that takes is to just drag that down like that that's not gonna line up but something like that that tends to look pretty good uh, in my opinion and then also I want to do another thing with this E so this E I it was really bothering me how just plain E it was I guess like it was just a plain standard E and like the or like this top bit was bothering me most of all not really the rest of it you can see what I did this was like the before and then I made that cut right there and to do that all you need to do is select the whole corner so we'll select this bit right here go to the pathfinder shape modes click the first one that will just unite it and then let's go ahead and get the rectangle again and we'll just create a standard rectangle whatever zoom in here bring it down and line it up with this um, this square here this angle so it'll just match up perfectly there we go that's gonna be as close as we get um, you could always adjust this really so let me just let me select the point come on bump that over one okay that works and then you just have to put that on the corner of the E you can see this angle is not as sharp as the one I did before so I'm actually just gonna create my own angle with this so I'll just go like that and do that boom select both of these guys and do that second one and I'll cut it up I didn't put it up far enough of course there we go now you do it cuts that bit out and then let's go ahead and do what we did earlier and do something like that so that's a little too close select these guys and bring them out maybe even a little more come on being frustrating alright that's a little better there we go so that kinda of made the E a little more interesting this E still looks a little off I should have spent more time on it and created the angles a little better you can see this one looks a lot better I, I think in my opinion I think in my opinion that was just kinda of, uh, but the next thing you notice on these logos down here is that there's some bits that are rounded and I think the adding the roundness really makes the logo look nice like this kind of looks just a little too standard a little too beginner for me uh, I think adding the roundness really kind of makes it look uh, more professional and just nicer overall so to do that you just want to keep the direct selection tool the white selection tool up and actually no select select everything first and then go to the pathfinder shape mode do the first one and that will just merge everything then you want to go to the direct selection and you can see all these circles pop up to round it and right now if I click one and do it 
it'll do that to every single one. So you can see that rounded every bit, and that kind of looks stupid. Like you can see the end looks really, really dumb. So let me Command Z that. And you just want to pick points. So you want to click whatever point you're going to do, and then you can see that uh, anchor will come up, that circle for you to round it. And you just want to click and bring it in and it'll round it. If it goes red, that's as far as it goes, and then you have to stop. There you go. But if you want to go further, the thing that stops it is this point here. So say you wanted to really round it, this point is preventing that. You can just go to the pen tool, delete anchor point, and just delete that. And it won't affect anything uh, of, of the logo, unless it's like a rounded position, then it might. But in this case, everything's straight. So now if we go ahead, we can go and do it a little more like that. And that might be a little too much. I don't know, that's pretty good actually. But you just want to do this to a couple corners that might look good. So maybe this one slightly. I'm not going to delete the point because you guys kind of get that. Um, I'm going to move this one over actually and do this. There we go. And you'll notice this part's rounded, but this bit in here is straight. And that can look a little odd. So you might just want to click that point and add a bit of roundness to it. Sometimes it'll look odd too if you do it. Um, but in this case, it should look pretty good. So yeah, that looks all right. Not too bad. I usually add less round in the center portions like here and here than on the outside. It just looks a little nicer. And then I'm going to go ahead and do that to the E too. Just a little bit. Since the E has these three points, it bothers me when these are all, or like two of these are similar. So like this one's that angle, uh, the bottom one goes uh, top right to bottom left, and this one is the same but with that rounded bit. So it looks a little nicer. And then for symmetry purposes, since this bit was rounded here, this bit for me has to be rounded or else it'll bother me. So actually I'm just going to click this point, move it down and go ahead and do that there we go and that is basically the whole logo um, that's kind of the whole process of going through it you can see it we started with something simple and then made our way up and then if you want any gaps and stuff you'll notice like I put a gap here to make that L a little more distinguishable you just have to do that square technique again so just get a square and then Boom. And since the whole logo is selected now, you just have to select any part of it really. And then go and select the shape modes and do the second one. And of course these are not connected actually. Let me ungroup them. And then you can do it with that. There we go. And voila. There we go guys. So hopefully this wasn't too confusing. Hopefully you guys understand what I'm saying. Oh, and if you want to create this sort of outline effect, all that takes is selecting everything, switching from fill to stroke, going into uh, a line stroke to the inside, and then just bumping the stroke up until it looks pretty good. So like right there. But you'll notice if you have curves, it'll kind of ruin it and it'll look kind of stupid, uh, especially if it's like thin like this. If you had to like, if, it was, if this was a little thicker, it'd probably look a lot better. And this angle on the E kind of looks stupid. You can see this logo just kind of works out because everything's straight. But yeah, guys, that's creating a text logo in Illustrator. This is how I do it. This is the process I go through. Hopefully it wasn't too confusing. Uh, drop a like if this did help you guys out. Be sure to follow me on Twitter for everything I'm doing, projects, stuff. Subscribe for more tutorials and add my Snapchat to see secret projects I'm working on. My Twitter's at Quezzy, my Snapchat's Quezzy, and obviously you're on my YouTube, so just click subscribe down below. Thank you guys for watching. I'll see you next time, and peace.